Hey everybody, Ed Homewood, Old Guy Hi-Fi Channel. It's a beautiful day in Chicago. If you know what album that's from and who the artist was, please put it in the comments below. Again, it's a beautiful day in Chicago. Anyway, I wanted to do a quick review overview again of the Cambridge Audio MXN10. My last review was very long and a little bit verbose as I tend to be. Uh, my wife calls it mansplaining. But I wanted to talk about the unit a little bit more in its application and who's going to use it and why and really kind of where you can go with a unit. So it is obviously a network player. It's a streamer with a wonderful built-in DAC. Now the DAC is only for the streamer. You can't connect other devices and have it decoded. It is an ESS Sabre uh, chip DAC, but I will tell you, I don't believe DAC chips make that much difference. Um, I think topologies can make a difference. So Delta Sigma has a certain characteristic, and I think uh, Art R DACs have a different characteristic. And of course, FPGA DACs have a different characteristic. But in the Delta Sigma world, this sounds better. The Cambridge MXN10 sounds better than almost every other Delta Sigma DAC I've heard. And I've had an SMSL Mark, uh, M500 Mark III, which is a more expensive DAC than this unit itself is. I have a LOXG D30 uh, DAC, which is a Sabre chip. Doesn't sound anywhere near as good as the Cambridge. Uh, and I have a shit mul uh, Bifrost multi-bit, which of course is an Art R DAC and has a different sound characteristic, which is quite good. But I will tell you that I think the Cambridge, as it sounds out of the box, I could probably live with this unit without any trouble at all. It really sounds good and really sounds satisfactory. So you, the unit at $500 is not cheap. There are less expensive streamers out there, but I will tell you, I believe that the streaming magic that goes on inside any of these boxes, I think the quality of the stream has a huge impact on the quality of sound. And the Cambridge stream OS or stream firmware, software, whatever you want to call it, is outstanding. And I've compared it against the Wing product, which is very good at, at an entry level piece. Um, I compared it against the Blue Sound node, which I think this thing sounds way better than the Blue Sound. Now, you can connect those other things to outboard DACs. But again, the stream quality coming out of the device is not going to give those DACs an opportunity to sound their best. I have connected the MXN10 to external DACs, including my shit Bifrost, and I will tell you the unit does scale without any question. So you could, if you wanted to, you could start out with an MXN10 and stop right there and be happy. I probably would be very happy that way. Or if you want to, it can grow with you. If you want to get a better DAC, if you want to try R to R, if you want to try an FPGA DAC, this will be able to provide the signal to that DAC to sound its best. And I think that's the important thing. It doesn't have a lot of features. I don't think that's the function of it. I think sound quality is Cambridge's first priority on this. So no touchscreen, no whiz bangy fancy features. And that's fine because I'm going to install it in my rack and it's going to sit there behind a smoke glass door and I'm not going to get up out of my chair and go touch the touch screen. I'm going to run it from the tablet just like I can the Cambridge. I can run it from a tablet. So from a functional standpoint, that's the same. All right, view meters are really pretty, but I phony view meters, I don't know if they do anything for me. You want some big Macintosh view meters? Nah, that can get me going. Um, so the view meters and the fancy displays and that stuff don't mean anything to me because I sit far enough away, I probably won't see it anyway. So this DAC is for someone who cares about sound quality, cares about ease of use, and we'll talk about the Stream Magic software here in the next section. It is easy. It's set up fast. It's reliable. It was rock solid. It is very responsive and very quick to interact. So when you want to find your artist, you want to find the album, you want to find that track, you can do it just almost instantly. Uh, it's that good. Plus, it has the ability to decode any style of uh, compressed audio format you want mp3 uh, vog orbis aac aiff it'll also do uncompressed flac um, it will do dsd up to 512 and on regular streaming you know pcm it'll do 32 up to 768 so it has all of the specs and all of those features by the way it does do a really good job with dsd and because you can connect a hard drive to it you can have your file stored on either a NAS, because it will connect to a NAS through the network, or you can plug a hard drive into it, which is what I do. And that's where my DSD files live. It sounds wonderful on DSD. Sounds way better than the LOX GD30, which is the only reason I have that for DSD. So I think it is a piece for someone who really focuses on sound quality, focuses on build quality, uh, focuses on ease of use, because it is super easy to use. The software's simple. It doesn't take up. I mean, it, literally, I was up and running in 10 minutes. Um, it took me longer to figure out that my tablet wasn't on the right network in my house 
to connect to the unit. And that was it. I, after I did that, it connected up right away. Um, it also gives you the ability to do a lot of different things, which we'll talk about in the software. So sound quality, outstanding. Build quality, outstanding. Feature set, basic, but robust. And that's the key thing. Software, you'll see. Very nice. So I'm going to cut away to do the software right now. And when I come back, we're going to just do a quick summary. So let's go there. So you can see the home screen of my uh, tablet. I've got it in portrait format just because it, it, the artwork for the albums and so forth will show up better. So I'm going to start Stream Magic, and it's going to go ahead and launch. Now the player is in standby mode, and when it comes up at the very top, you'll see the actual MXN10 that I have. And if I had other Stream Magic devices in the house, I could access them by hitting Change, and it would locate those other devices. In that upper uh, portion of the screen, you'll see a standby mode, a standby button that will put the unit to sleep. Under settings, it gives you ways to come in and change the network name of the device, how you're going to identify it on AirPlay, does it power down after so many minutes, the rune ready, obviously, and then it can be a preamp, so you have a volume control and you can set the volume limit and so forth from the settings. Moving down below that where it says sources, you'll see the things that I've entered as sources. So Cobuzz, Tidal, those are my accounts, Bluetooth, and it is 5.1, Spotify Connect and Tidal Connect, and they're always there. So Title Connect and Spotify Connect work the same way. You initiate the player from your phone or tablet device, and then in that Title or uh, Spotify software, you hand off the stream to the Cambridge device so that your phone at that point is not streaming. It's only a remote control. And the Cambridge uh, MXN10 is pulling the stream from the internet. So now you can go on your phone and do something else while the music still plays. You can just come back to Spotify or Title app and change things as you wish. Then internet radio, which has a lot of information, the hundreds of stations, internet radio stations from around the world is very interesting. And a media library would be if I had an NAS drive with media uh, music on it, or I had my hard drive plugged into it. I do down in the basement. I don't hear because I'm at my desktop. Below that are the presets. There's four buttons on the front of the unit. I can change those to be whatever I want to. I have two as radio stations, as two as playlists. And then underneath it shows recent radio stations, anything I've listened to that I might want to go back to. That way I don't forget what they are. It's there. I can find it easily. And under what's new is information about firmware upgrades or software upgrades uh, and product upgrades. And again, any of the Cambridge products that stream use Stream Magic software. So that's why that's there. So along the bottom of the screen, you'll see where it says home, library, radio, and more. And again, we're in standby mode. I'm going to go ahead and take the unit and power it up. So now where it's awake, it will prop up whatever the last thing we were listening to. And it happened to be a radio station, uh, internet radio station. But I'm going to come, the home button on the far left takes you back to this screen. Library takes you to your library. And whatever the last thing you were listening to in your library, which happened to be Cobas for me. So under library, I have my title account, my Cobas account. If I had a Deezer account, it would be there, but I don't. Under servers, it would show your uh, network area storage and AS drive. And under USB drives, it would show your hard drive or USB stick or whatever with media on it as being there. I don't have one plugged in right now. So under services, let's go ahead and we'll go to title. And what pops up are the, those first several uh, things, search, recommended releases, so forth, all the way down to my collection genres on up, that's the title creator material. Same as if you open title and you get the push of all of the stuff. So if I go out, come out to recommended and we go to albums, it's going to bring up all the albums that title is recommending right now. And you can see I have the thumbnails with all of the artwork and everything there. In the upper right hand corner is a little button. If I push that, it'll show me as a list. So however I want to look at it. And just like title, if I touch the three buttons on the far right, Play now, play next, add to queue, replace, yada, yada. Very, very simple. We just hit the back button there and then come back out. So again, all of that stuff until you get to my collection, that's all the title generated things. So if I come to my collection, this would be under mixes would be the mixes titles recommending for me because of stuff I happen to listen to. Under playlists will show all the playlists I've created within title. And I can look at them as a list or I can look at them as thumbnails. So let's go ahead and we'll go out to a playlist. I've created a playlist for the Cambridge MXN10. These are tracks I use to evaluate its sound quality. So we'll go there and it'll come up and it'll show the playlist, all the artwork and albums and so forth that are in the queue. And if I hit play now, it'll come up and it'll start with Sad Lisa, the first track. And if I touch that, it'll bring up the artwork. 
And if I skip ahead, it'll bring up the next song, the next track. If I skip ahead, it'll bring up the next track. So it shows the artwork very nicely, obviously. It gives me a, a long, underneath the artwork, it gives me a lapse time and then total time. And under total time, you'll see this is track six out of 34. And under, and under the elapsed time shows the uh, song, artist, uh, album title. And then underneath, you'll see it says 44, 116 bit flack. So it identifies the format. And it does FLAC, it does Vigorbis, it does AAC, it does AIFF, it does all the Apple formats, it does almost all of the lossless codecs, it does all the MP3 codecs, and it even does DSD, and it does DSD extremely well. The MXN10 is a DSD decoder, uh, and it does a great job at it. I don't have any DSD files hooked up to it right now on my hard drive, so we have this. Now, as you can see the artwork, if I swipe from right to left, there's my volume control. So now I can use this as a preamp, and it's perfect in a vintage system. If you saw my Marantz PM74 uh, review, I used the MXN10 as its source and used this volume as its preamp. So that's how it looks in title. It looks exactly the same in Cobuzz. looks exactly the same in Spotify. I wanted, if I wanted to use my Spotify uh, um, software on this tablet, I can go ahead and connect. And it works just like Spotify Connect or Title Connect works on your phone. It's exactly the same. So we're going to come out of here. And that's our playlist again. And down along the bottom, I have home, library, radio, more. We're going to go to radio. And it's going to show up dozens and dozens of stations from all around the world. Some are local broadcast stations. I can find sh uh, stations here in Chicago. Uh, and remember, it's a beautiful day in Chicago. What album is that from? Anyway, so all of those stations. And again, it's rich content. There's so much stuff. This is a great way to find new music. Great way to sample stuff you may not be familiar with. Great way to hear what's going on. Maybe you want to find out what's popular in Germany or in Belgium or whatever. All of those stations are here. It's around the world. So it really does an excellent job with that. And I find it to be a great way to get out of my comfort zone and try new music and new genres that I'm not familiar with, uh, especially some of the world music formats like Middle Eastern music or um, African music, things like that, Indian music, some beautiful music in India. Uh, Ravi Shankar is a big fan. I'm a big fan of his. So it's a great way to discover music. It takes you outside your normal comfort zone, which I think is really so again, important. That's the Stream Magic software. Easy, reliable, stable. It's not glitzy, but I don't care. I didn't get the Cambridge unit because I thought the software looked good or that it had a big fancy display on it. I'm recommending it because the sound quality. The build quality is excellent. The sound quality is phenomenal. And again, you could grow with this unit. I think it's a better choice than some of the other less expensive options. And as a streamer, believe me, the quality of the streamer does matter when it comes to sound quality. And the Cambridge Audio, that's what it has in space. So we're going to go back outside where I'm going to give you a summary. We're going to put the unit in standby. And I'm going to say thank you, and I'll talk to you in just a moment. Well, as you can see, the software is super easy to use. It's very robust. It's very responsive. And it's really comprehensive without being overly complicated. And I think that's an important thing for me. You know, with the, the fancy touchscreen stuff, I'm not going to get up and go touch the screen. I'm going to interact with the tablet. Uh, and that's how it's going to get used. So why pay for the touchscreen or why have that failure point? Um, I just want to use the tablet, have it done. And the Stream Magic software gets me there. And it's robust and it's simple and it's fast. And I can find what I need when I need it. Um, I don't care about the glamour. I'm not, I didn't buy the product to look at it. I bought the product to listen to. So the Cambridge MXN10 network player gets a highly recommended from me. I really, really like it. As I said, I could be happy with this in my system. It gives me the sound quality I'm looking for. It gives me that hours of listening, just absolutely discovering new music through the radio, and, uh, the radio stations and things like that. It's just great that way. So I would appreciate it if you give me a comment. Don't forget, it's a beautiful day in Chicago. If you can answer that, put it in the comments below. Um, I would greatly appreciate a like and subscribe. Um, about 80% of the folks that watch my videos don't subscribe, and I'm trying to get to 1,000 subscribers just as a milestone. I do this as a hobby, so it really doesn't matter that much, but it would be kind of nice to know that. Um, so I would appreciate that subscription. Also, too, in the description below are some Amazon affiliate links for products you'll see in my videos. So if you want to buy an MXN10, you can through Amazon. It's the same price as you pay anywhere else for it. I do make a small commission, but it doesn't affect your price at all. And it kind of helps support the channel in that I'm not trying to make a living off this, but I've spent some money on lights and some other stuff and some editing software and things like that to try to do a better job at it. And so if I could defray those costs, that'd be wonderful. So I really am grateful for your time. 
Thank you so very much. And again, uh, this is Ed Homewood, the Old Guy Hi-Fi channel, saying it's a beautiful day in Chicago. You guys have a great day. Thanks. We're about ready to begin our program. It's a beautiful day in Chicago.